by Gauteng Province, Gauteng Province Prep Exams 2022, Paper 1, Mathematics. Right, we look at question 1. Then there are four different sections. The first one is solve for x, and there is your equation. Well, in fact, for all four, you must solve for x. Right, that is your quadratic equation, a fraction, inequality, and thirds. So those are the first four where you must solve for x. Then you must solve for x and y, so-called simultaneous equations. And then, of course, equations based on exponents. And then, of course, one based on the nature of the roots. So if you look at the first one, now remember it is important when you solve quadratic equations that you must have zero on your right hand side. If you don't have it, you make sure you transfer all the terms to the left hand side in order to have zero. But fortunately, we already have zero there, so therefore this is quite straightforward. So in this case, you can say 2x is equal to zero or x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. Right, so let's look at the memo then. So there you are. So you let, of course, x squared minus 1 is sum and difference. Right, or alternatively, you can do it like this. You can say that x squared minus 1 equals to 0 then what you can do is transfer 1 to the right hand side right and then you find square root on both sides but don't forget plus or minus and therefore x is plus or minus 1 so this is the alternate way you could have done it or you could have used sum and difference so therefore 2x gives you a 0 minus 1 gives you a plus 1 there and plus 1 gives you a minus 1 so it's quite an easy one Two marks, one mark for the factors, or if you didn't use factors, then the one mark will be for this method. And then, of course, one mark for all three correct answers. Right, next example. Now we're dealing with an in uh, sorry, a quadratic equation with a fraction. Now, the best solution usually is to get rid of the fraction so therefore what I will suggest is the following if you have x over 1 minus 6 over 1 plus 2 over x equals to 0 so that's what I will do then even 0 I can place over 1 then the LCM for 1 1 x and 1 is x so the LCM is x and we normally multiply each term with x. So what is x times x? x squared. x times 6? Negative 6x. X. x times 2 over x is 2. Remember the x cancels. And x times 0 is 0. And then you end up with that. And now you have a choice. You can either use the formula, which is perhaps best suited. If you look at the question, they say, correct to two decimal places so that of the formula is more suitable so let's just do the memo quickly so there you are we just got a step now use your quadratic formula which is of course on your formula sheet do your substitution okay people what can go wrong here if you substitute a negative into a negative you might leave it as a negative so please be careful with that one the rest is calculate work. Please follow the instructions. If they say two decimals, you round off to two decimals. So one mark for standard form, which is that one there. One mark for the substitution into the correct formula. And then of course one mark each for the answers. You will be penalized for rounding off in this question only. Any other valid method. You, of course you could have used completing the square as well which of course I will not recommend so there you are quite an easy example for four marks then the next question is 1.1.3 that deals with the inequality again people I see a 6 there 
So that should be of concern. You should be worried that I don't want a 6 there. I would like to have a 0. So therefore, you will have to transfer 6 to the left hand side. And then remove all the brackets. So let's see. So what you should do is FOIL. So x times x is x squared. x times 4 is 4x. Minus 1 times x is a negative x. And negative 4. And bring the 6 to the left hand side. Is it clear class? So it's x squared plus 3x. So of course I am collecting my like terms. And then I end up with that equation. Right. Okay. So if I can take you back to the memo then that is exactly what happened here. So there you are. You already know how I got to this step here. Because I want a zero. Then factorize. Oh, be careful with factors, people. Always check your factors. Then next I would advise you is to get what I call the so-called critical points. Right. So therefore, this is what I do. So if the factors are, if the factors are, Right, x plus 5, x minus 2, greater or equal to 0, then I will say, let x plus 5 be equal to 0. Now remember, this is not the solution. This is only a means of getting to the solution. So I'm looking for these two so-called critical points, which I normally call, because now we're going to do the number line. You see? So this is the negative 5, and that is a 2. Right, and what you do is, people, now you're just going to check and test. So what you can do is like this. I use a, a dot because I got an equal sign. Remember the negative value to that. I will test any value here in the middle, like a 0, for instance. Test a 0. If I put a 0 into this equation, I'll get 0 plus 5 is 5. 0 minus 2 was minus, so it's a positive times a negative. Positive times a negative, which is a negative. Is a negative greater than 0? No, a negative is smaller than 0. So that means, people, this part does not satisfy the equation. So the solutions will lie there and there. So it is x less than or equals to minus 5, greater or equals to 2. So in other words, it is a split answer. Therefore, we use or. Or you can use a semicolon. It's a split answer, so therefore, no continuous uh, representation. Right, cool. That brings us now to the next question, which of course is 1.1.4. And of course, there are, there's two ways to do this one. Again, like previously, you can multiply with the LCM. But if your brackets are identical, then use the so-called K method. Do you still remember the K method? Well, let's see the map. So let the bracket or the cell be K. Then this one will be replaced by K, and that will be replaced by K. And now I can multiply with the LCM K. To get the standard for factorized, be careful with the factors, and then k is minus 5 or 2. Don't stop there because we mustn't solve for k, we must solve for x. So, therefore, replace this. So, remember, k is square root of x minus 2. So, you have this one equals to minus 5, and you have this one equals to 2. Now, this one is not going to work, right? Because if you take it further, and you square both sides, and you test your answer, it is not going to satisfy the equation. So don't waste your time with this one. This one, however, is going to work. Square both sides, you get 6. Put 6 in there to check whether it does satisfy the equation. So that is how I will do this one. The so-called K method. That brings us to 1.2, simultaneous equations. Right. So for x and y. And of course we recognize the linear equation and the quadratic one. The linear one, be careful. Always choose the variable that is 
a 1, like a 1x, and make it the subject of the formula. So shall we do it? So I make x the subject, so 2y goes over. Then substitute this x value into that equation. So there's your substitution. Be careful now when you remove the brackets. So I can go wrong here. We can say 2 times 2y, which is wrong. You must first use bot mass, remember? First squares, and then you multiply in. Please, this is grade 9 work, 8 and 9. Make sure you know it. Then you end up with two terms. This is not a trinomial. It's two terms, so usually common factor. Why? Therefore, y is 0, or y is minus 2 thirds. Then don't stop there. You must first solve on x. So substitute those two values into equation 1. Then you'll get 1 and minus a third. People, you should always get full marks for simultaneous equations. 1.3, exponential equation. You'll notice we have x on the left hand side and we've got y on the right hand side. So that should ring a bell. So what do we do? Well, here the common factor is 2 to the power x, right? And there the common factor is 3 to the power y. So 2 plus 1 is 3, 3, uh, 3 squared is 9 minus 1 is 8. Then you can bring the 8 to the left hand side and the 3 to the right hand side. Right. So you divide by 3 and you divide by 8. Now why do I do that? Because 8 is 2 to the power 3, so that is a wise choice. So I can link those two and I can link those two. So if I take 2 to the power 3 up, it becomes minus 3. If I take 3 to the power 1 up, minus 1. So therefore, uh, 2 can be a 0 and 3 can be a 0. So therefore, x minus 3 is a 0 or y minus 1 is a 0. Because remember, 2 to the power 0 is 1, 3 to the power 0 is also 1. That's why I can equate them to 0. So therefore, x is 3 or y is 1. Not so bad. Not so bad. Next example. Right, is 1.4. Right, nature of the roots. So the equations, x squared plus rx plus m equals to 0, and x squared plus mx plus r equals to 0, have real and equal roots. Now immediately you must remember the discriminant or delta. How does delta look like? if the roots are real and equal. So that you must remember. If you have forgotten that, then you won't be able to answer this question. Then you must solve for R, this R here, and you must find that M. But remember, R must be positive and M must be positive. So let's see. So, this is in standard form, AX squared plus BX plus C, ax squared plus bx plus c. So I know exactly. So remember, for real and equal roots, delta must be equals to zero. Do you still remember this? I hope so. So there you are. Replace, so b squared is at r squared, a is 1, and c is m. Then you get the equation, m equals to r squared over 4. Call it equation 1. Then do the same with this equation, also into delta, Right? Remember, again, A is 1, B is M, and C is R. Substitute, and then you get this equation, 2. Now you can substitute 1 into 2. Let's do that. So M equals to R squared over 4 goes into this M here. And there you are. Right? Square. Multiply with the LCM 16 on both sides. Take out R as a common factor, and R is 0, or remember, R cubed minus 64 is what? It is the difference between two cubes. The difference between two cubes. And that's how we factorize it. This is grade 10 mathematics, people. The difference between two cubes. Go and revise this. So therefore, Remember, R can't be 0 because if the paper said R must be greater than 0. So this R you can ignore, but R equals to 4 we can use. Right, R equals to 4. 
that therefore, and if R is 4, substitute that back into this equation to get M. That M equals to 4. Okay, so that completes uh, question 1, which I think was quite reasonable and not too difficult. Easy, easy marks. 27. Definitely easy marks.